So how are we supposed to work through this if we don't talk? Well, we're damn sure not going to talk about it right now. So can we just drop it? No, we can't. All right, fine. Get it. Hey, Daddy's got to go, okay? I'll see you later, all right? Hello? Okay, Professor Miller, what is this? I mean, what sociological issues could you possibly be exploring with this movie? It's a love story. Humans need love, and sometimes you die before you get it. Okay, there's nothing new there. Your butt just wanted to see a movie. I just wanted to see a movie, huh? Yeah, and your butt was too scared to play hooky by yourself, so you dragged your entire class down there with you? I was not playing hooky. I was trying to show my students that in the African diaspora, from the Mississippi Delta that gave us the blues to the Brazilian favelas that gave us samba, people of African descent have always created their mythological heroes and stories through music. Oh. And, Miss Joseph, like most mythological stories, they are meant to inform and to help a particular culture move through times of hardship. Thus, you have gospel music, jazz, and now hip-hop. I knew that. Good. Now that we're on the same page, what are you doing? Uh, just packing. Ah, now we're definitely on the same page. Oh. What? It's the part where the little boy's playing the guitar. That's one of the best parts of the movie. Yeah. Hey, Miss Joseph. It's not a tragic ending. Orpheus and Eurydice, he found love. And that legacy has continued with the little boy and little girl. Good night, Professor Miller. Good night, Miss Joseph. Hey, ball porn. Wouldn't be no fun whooping your ass if I didn't talk about it. Woo! Show me the money, baby. All right, look, one more. <laughs> just, just one more game. No, no. One more game. Me about fifty thousand dollars in unpaid debts from past games dating back. To I don't even know when, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're right about that. Hey, look, you gonna drink the rest of this? Oh, no, go ahead. All right, all right. So what's your weed at now? No. Well, either that or you're dealing. We're not dealing, Kenny. Well, then what's up? Can we uh, talk for a minute? Yeah, all right. Let's talk. Kenny, one of the reasons I came to Chicago was to uh, let you know what's going on with me. There's no e easy way to say this. <laughs> well, say what, Kelvin? I made you a V positive. Yesterday, you, I mean, you didn't be asking me about this shit if I didn't just tell you I had HIV. How, well, how did you get this thing, man? I'm not a needle user. I'm not bisexual or gay, okay? I'm just one of these unlucky motherfuckers who got this shit having unprotected sex with women. Does your, your wife have it, too? Yeah. Yeah. We haven't spoken since she was diagnosed. Hoping we can we can work it out. Mm. 
Yes, sir. my mother with the bone marrow thing and now Calvin. <laughs> you know, I swear I am beginning to think that God is punishing me for something. Of course not, sweetie. That's not it. Man, things were good yesterday. You know, I, I blew the candles out. I even made one of those stupid ass wishes. You know, maybe God could give me some good days with, you know, not only Calvin, but with my mom. And he will. Boy has HIV, Maxine. He has HIV. But he's not dead, Kenny. Sweet, people live a lifetime after their diagnosis. You know, and with the right medicine, diet, and exercise, your brother could outlive you. So you and Calvin can continue to build your relationship. This'll just be a part of it. Oh, God, this is a crazy world. You know, I don't understand how two grown-ass men can have sex, especially when they know that the AIDS is out there. Kenny, this is not the time to be homophobic. <sighs> and you got to quit calling it the AIDS. Well, I am not homophobic. No, I'm telling the truth. Now, the, the AIDS is out there. And they know it, and they just keep bump bumping and, and just doing their thing, and then people like my brother and his wife end up getting it. So did your brother say if he was gay or bisexual? Well, no, my brother is not gay, Maxine. How do you know, Kenny? Because I asked him. What about that guy that came by the party for him? Oh, hell, Maxine, come on. Look, I'm not saying that a straight person can't get HIV. I know that. I just hope Kelvin is not in denial. That's how a whole lot of women end up with HIV. Getting it from some man who can't admit that he's having sex with other men. My brother is not gay. Now let's drop it. Okay. Well, I didn't even know Calvin was gay. Well, he says he's not. Yeah, I remember Charlene. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. She worked at Cut It Up. She's married to the pro football player. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember her. She got oh. HIV? Mm. She died from AIDS about a year ago. Her husband was sleeping with everything that walked. Men and women. Happens all the time. Mm-hmm. And when she confronted him, he was like, well, I'm not really gay. I just like kicking it with men. What is that? Do you been kind of out there lately? You've been careful? I mean, have you been tested? I've been careful, Maxine. And besides, uh, I've been tested before. When? When I had sex with Jordan. The condom broke. Oh, my God. Why didn't you tell us? I just felt like telling you would make it too real, you know? But I can tell you this. Waiting for my test results was the longest two weeks of my life. My whole life literally flashing before my eyes. And then, of course, you start making promises to God. <laughs> God, if you get me through this mess... I promise I will invest heavily in somebody's condom company. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you take care of yourself. Oh, yeah. Hey, you guys, you know what? Um, my boss is having a housewarming party tonight. Why don't, why don't we all go? It'd be fun. Yeah, well, I'd love to, but I've got to go away on business this weekend. On, on the, the weekend? weekend? Yes, on the weekend. Well, what about you, Bird? No. Oh, thanks for the invite, Maxine, but I'm really not in the party mood. You should ask Kenny, though. This thing with Kelvin's really got to him. I don't think Kenny's in the party in mood either. Hmm. I want to talk. Go away. I, 
I'm, I'm sorry for walking out on you. Don't apologize. I'm used to it. Look, I, I know you're angry, and I'm probably getting on your nerves with my questions, but you have to understand, it's killing me not knowing what happened. It's killing you? Yes, it is. Uh, okay. Can't listen to this. Bird. What? I keep telling you I don't want to talk about this. I need time, and you keep pushing. Then let's talk about it, Bird. About what? I'm Larry? tired of walking around this house acting like nothing You're happened. You're tired? I'm tired. I'm tired of being married to somebody I don't trust. And I'm tired of all your fucking lies. And I'm tired of all this goddamn drama. Bird, I didn't have any other choice. The only reason why you want to know what they did is so that you can ease your own mind. It ain't got that shit to do with me. Who don't give a shit about me, Lem. What about me? Who's gonna ease my motherfucking pain? Not you! I just wanted to make sure that she was okay. How can I be okay? You want to know what happened to me, Lem? Yes. Fine, I'll tell you. They grabbed me in the parking lot and threw me in the trunk of a car. And then they shot me up with some shit to make me fall asleep. And by the time I came to, like, it took me, like, an hour to figure out that I had not been raped. Do you know what that feels like, Liv? Do you know what it feels like to think these guys... And, you know, maybe they weren't finished. My hands were tied. My mouth was taped. I was thrown in a closet like a dog. And you know what? Every time I look at your face, it reminds me of every single second of every single minute of every single hour that I was in there. So no. What are you going to do for me, Lem? favorite room in the house. Uh -huh. Kitchen. Yeah. Dining area. Living room. Terrace. Seclusion, which is really why I bought the place. Of course. And over here is going to be my bedroom. Right here. Uh -huh. And this is your bedroom. Okay. So where's that bathroom I needed since our last rest stop? Well, the bathroom's right here, but we have to share, so and take all day. Would you rather we synchronize our watches? <laughs> um, Charles? What's the matter? No toilet paper? No, no. There's no water. No water? No. Tell about now, and I have to drive back, but hmm. I don't know. I guess it's okay for one night. Hey, isn't that place Rustic Ridge around here? I heard they have really nice cabins. Oh, no, no, that's like it's like bougie cabin living. Plus, it's it's further than the motel. All right, well, I guess we'll just go back to Chicago and do this. No, 